I'm Emmanuel, and before we begin I want to extend a warm welcome to Heaven's Gate. If you're new here our mission is simple, to share genuine and powerful Christian testimonies from all over the world. We focus on topics deeply connected to the Kingdom of God, such as experiences of the afterlife, heaven, hell, and many other Bible-related subjects, all presented in an engaging storytelling format. We invite you to become part of this community by subscribing to our channel. God bless you as you do. Today's experience was sent to us by a brother named Mike, who was shown a different segment of hell, where many who claim to be Christians lost their salvation due to certain actions. Stay with us until the end to fully grasp the depth of his experience. And don't forget, we will be posting new videos every day. My name is Mike, I'm 32 years old and my life has never been perfect. Raised in a small town in the heart of Ohio, I always knew what it meant to struggle. My family was devout. I was raised on bread and the Bible, and was taught that faith was the answer to everything. But faith doesn't pay the bills or heal the pain. When my mother died when I was 15, something inside me broke, and I began a downward spiral that no one could stop. My drug addiction didn't happen all at once, it was a slow, steady corrosion. It started with a few too many beers, and ended with the white powder that made me forget everything. I worked odd jobs, lived in a tiny apartment far from the few friends I had left. I was alone. Even God seemed distant, and I no longer cared. One evening, after another week of relapses and broken promises, I took more than my body could handle. I don't remember exactly when my heart stopped, but the darkness enveloped me suddenly. There was no pain, just a profound silence. And then, the beginning of my experience beyond the earthly world. The sensation of falling felt endless. A bottomless void, an abyss that swallowed everything in me. It wasn't like falling asleep, it was like being consumed by nothingness. I no longer had any awareness of my body, my hands or my feet. No pain, just a muted silence, cold and unsettling. I remember thinking, is this it? Is this how it ends? But there was no fear. Just a dark tranquility, as if everything was suspended in eternal waiting. Then, a distant glow. It wasn't the light I expected, the one I'd heard about in stories of near-death experiences. It wasn't the warm, welcoming light of a promised paradise, but a pale gray glow that slowly took shape around me. I found myself in a place I never could have imagined, a vast, barren desert, endless. The ground beneath me was cracked, as if it hadn't seen rain in millennia. The air was still, devoid of any life. There were no trees, no flowers, no signs of movement. Just me in the void. A sense of anguish gripped me. I had no idea where I was, but I knew this place wasn't heaven. That's when I saw him. A solitary figure walking slowly appearing as a distant silhouette against the infinite horizon. As he got closer, my heart began to race, a mix of anxiety and confusion. Then suddenly, I recognized him. Even from that distance, I knew who he was. It was Greg. His heavy stride, his worn and aged face, the tormented expression. It was like seeing a distorted version of the man I once knew. Greg had been a pillar of the church in my town, a respected man, always impeccable in his manners, always the first to offer a comforting word. I remember his sermons full of fervor and wisdom. He was the perfect Christian example. I approached him not knowing exactly what to say. When he got close enough, his gaze met mine and his eyes were full of a suffering I had never seen before. Greg, I whispered, my voice cracking with surprise. He nodded slowly but didn't speak right away. He looked at me with an expression that spoke of despair as if his soul was trapped in eternal pain. When he finally spoke, his voice was hoarse, tired. Yes, Mike, it's me. I didn't expect to find you here, I said, unable to hide my shock. What? What is this place? What happened to you? Greg sat down on the desolate sand. He seemed heavy as if every movement was an enormous effort. This is our destiny, Mike, he said, his voice broken. This is where lies end. I couldn't understand. Greg had always been considered an example of righteousness. But, 
You were a man of faith, always in church, always praying. How can you be here? His gaze hardened and with a long sigh he began to speak, as if telling his story was a burden he could no longer bear. Mike, I was living a lie. Every word that came out of my mouth, every prayer, every gesture, it was a mask. I never truly sought God, I sought power, respect, the adoration of others. My faith was a cover, a way to feel superior to judge others, but deep down, I was empty, I preached love, but I never really knew it. Greg looked up at me, his eyes filled with tears that never fell. I lived for judgment, Mike. I judged everyone who wasn't like me. I believed I was superior because I knew the scriptures, because I prayed fervently. But in truth, I had never really opened my heart to God. Now I'm here, condemned for my hypocrisy. My mind was in turmoil. I had seen Greg's devotion, I had admired it, and now everything seemed to crumble. It was as if the veil had been lifted, revealing a truth I never imagined. Here? I stammered. You mean... This is hell? He nodded slowly, as if even confirming it was a burden too heavy to bear. Yes, Mike. This is where those who live a lie end up. It's not just a place of flames and physical suffering as many think. It's much worse. It's the eternal awareness of who you truly are. Here, every deception, every act of hypocrisy is exposed. And you can't escape. You can no longer hide behind the mask you built in life. His voice became a whisper. This is my punishment. Knowing that I deceived myself and everyone who believed in me. Greg slowly stood up and pointed to a spot on the horizon. I hadn't noticed it before, but now I could see other figures moving slowly in the distance. There were many of them, men and women, all wandering in that desolate land. I moved closer to see better and I recognized some faces. I was stunned. Among them were people I had known, whom I had seen as models of virtue and holiness. Who are they? I asked, my voice trembling. Greg shook his head his expression grave. They are the ones who, like me, lived in lies. Preachers, leaders, men and women of the church who used their faith as a shield to hide their sins. Those who presented themselves as models of virtue but inside had hearts full of hatred, greed, and judgment. We began to walk, and the closer we got, the more I could see the torment on their faces. A man I once knew as a respected pastor, another who had been a beloved Sunday school teacher. And yet now I saw their despair. Greg pointed to one of them, a tall, robust man, his eyes fixed on the ground. See him? His name is Joseph. He led a congregation for decades, preaching God's love. But while he preached, he was accumulating wealth, deceiving people, and making promises he knew he couldn't keep. He sold his soul for money and power. I moved closer and my head began to spin, it can't be, I whispered. Aren't all these... Christians? Greg nodded. Yes, they were. But being a Christian doesn't just mean going to church or knowing the scriptures. It means living according to those principles. It means humility, mercy, forgiveness. These people, like me, wore faith as a garment, but never let it penetrate their hearts. The weight of what I was witnessing began to overwhelm me. This wasn't just a physical hell. It was a place where the soul was stripped of all illusion, where all the pain and suffering came from the realization of one's own hypocrisy. Greg led me deeper into that world. We walked for what seemed like hours, through desolate plains until we reached a large structure, a massive black stone building that seemed to rise suddenly out of nowhere. Its walls were tall and cold with no visible door. It seemed impenetrable. What is this place, I asked. Greg didn't respond right away, but his eyes betrayed fear. It's where souls are judged. Where everything you've done, everything you've hidden, is brought to light. Before I could say anything else, the wall seemed to open suddenly. A wave of cold air hit me, and I felt a deep sense of condemnation. Inside the building, there were rows and rows of men and women, all waiting. There were no screams, no noise, just a silent awareness. 
I won't say that my life has become perfect. I still have my demons. Sometimes I feel that weight on my shoulders, especially on the darkest nights when old memories resurface. But now I face them. I no longer run. I look them in the face knowing I'm not alone. There's something liberating in the awareness that I don't have to be perfect to be loved by God. For years, I thought faith was a race toward perfection, that God would only accept me if I managed to be flawless. But I've learned that faith is much more. It's not a facade to maintain, but a daily struggle to be honest with yourself and with God. He doesn't look at how well you present yourself to others, but at what's in your heart. Since I had that experience, I carry a constant reminder. The vision of hell of those souls trapped in hypocrisy is always with me. It's like a silent warning, reminding me every day of what can happen if I choose to live a lie. I can't let my path go down that road. I don't want to live a life that leads to an eternity of emptiness and torment. Now I know that strength doesn't lie in being perfect, but in getting back up after every fall and continuing to fight. The peace I've found is not the absence of struggle, but the awareness that despite everything, I'm walking in truth. It's not a peace born of perfection, but one that comes from living without lies. And with that, I finally find my peace. Thank you for listening to my story to the end. I hope this journey has touched you and made you reflect as much as it has changed me. If you enjoy stories like this, I invite you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next videos. Each story is an opportunity to explore new experiences and discover valuable lessons. And if you haven't already, take a look at the other videos. You'll find more deep and reflective stories that might surprise you. Thank you again for your time and support. Stay with us for more inspiring stories.